butterflies, line drives, watching TV. Had seven good years till I noticed they were looking at me. Come in here because to have fun, meet new friends, and come here because my grandma has to go to work. So I met a lot of new friends and mostly come here to play. To hang out with your friends, do a lot of sports, and do a lot of activities. I love the Boys and Girls Club. There's like much fun things to do, and my friends are here. And very funny. Very funny. <laughs> my apologies to Mr. Sheen. Uh, that should be his uh, his entrance music there. But uh, good morning. And uh, thank you very, very much for coming out for our, our One Campaign breakfast. The One Campaign is a, a lot of hard work for our board members and all to be able to uh, pull the community together and to uh, really push what the whole idea of the One Campaign is. It talks about one adult, one kid, and, and one life. And this is uh, partly a celebration, partly maybe a little bit of an ask later on, but uh, just to be able to celebrate what Boys, Club is, Boys and Girls Club is all about. about. I think uh, maybe during the presentations I'll probably fall back and call it the Boys Club because uh, when I was a Boys Club member myself and some of uh, the officers that are here, uh, it was just the Boys Club and now it's the Boys and Girls Club uh, and great addition as it was. Uh, I want to share with you just our, uh, our mission statement first and you, you have it on, on your tables but it's very simple but it talks about enabling all young people, especially those who need it most, to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. That says it all. That says everything that we're trying to pull off here with, with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, with that said, I do want to recognize a few people that have joined us here today. Uh, we really appreciate them taking the time out of their schedules. Uh, first off, uh, Martin Hernandez very often comes and represents uh, Kathy Long. Uh, he's now the Chief of Staff of Kathy Long's office, but also uh, County Supervisor Kathy Long. The fact that she was able to make this out of her busy schedule says, shows how important she sees uh, this program to be, and we really thank her for coming out. Uh, mayor Fred Robinson, the Santa Paula Mayor. Fred, thank you very much. Our new uh, high school superintendent uh, was able to join us today, Pam Mar Martins. Pam? I, I hate to recognize these guys because, you know, but we do have uh, our, our Santa Paula Fire Chief, Rick Ariza, and the Fillmore Fire Chief, Rigo uh, Landeros. Rigo? And we have two captains with the uh, Ventura County Sheriff's Office also representing uh, Chief, uh, Sheriff Dean is a, a past Chief of Fillmore, Captain Tim Hangel, and current Chief, Captain Monica McGrath. Monica and Tim, thank you. <laughs> and obviously we can't say enough about uh, our guest speaker, uh, Martin Sheen, for, for coming out today. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, I want to turn to uh, uh, introducing our, our uh, guest speaker. Uh, before that, I, I just wanted to share a, a, a small tidbit of information. Uh, Martin Sheen was kind enough last year, about a year and a half ago, to come and uh, talk to us at our breakfast. And at the end of the breakfast, uh, when he's walking out the door with me, there was a poster, and actually the poster's uh, here on the, the tripod, and he looked at it, and it was the one, the Be Great poster, with. Uh, his photograph up there, and he pointed out the, the ID card, uh, and it was all nicely aged and all, and it was signed Martin Sheen. And he said, no, 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 that, that's wrong. So he went up to the poster and actually scratched it out and put uh, AKA uh, and put up Ramon Estevez. And, uh, and, and we've saved that, and that, that's there today. Well, the National heard that, and the, the National Boys and Girls Club heard that, so they rushed and made a new banner and they, they got it to us, and this is the first time it's being shown where the, the real uh, Martin Sheen is up here today uh, behind us there. So, you know, when Martin speaks, people listen, I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> Very often you hear people talk about, uh, you know, how we appreciate somebody stepping out because they have such a busy schedule. This gentleman has an extremely busy schedule. Uh, all throughout the summer, he's been running literally all over the world. I think he was uh, in Ireland not too long ago, and uh, Washington, Chicago. Uh, 
And I had called him, uh, contacted him about a month ago and said, geez, we're having a little bit of difficulty trying to schedule our, our guest speaker this year. They just can't pull the schedule off. Do you have any suggestions of somebody that we might be able to invite? Well, rather than coming up with a suggestion, he immediately jumped on the idea he wanted to come back. And I think he made that connection with Santa Paula. Uh, he really said that he appreciated uh, the welcome that he had. He, he loved the community and all. And he really wanted the opportunity to return back uh, and come back and talk to us again. I mean, how can you turn something like that down? But so today, he did clear his schedule. He did, uh, and I believe you were in Chicago just yesterday. So uh, you know, he, he's running around. And uh, all throughout this fall, he's going to be busy. Uh, he has a new movie coming out, if I can give you a, a small plug. It's, it's an incredible movie called The Way, and if you go online, the movie hyphen, uh, the way hyphen the movie dot com, you can see a little bit about it. And I was lucky enough to see a screening in L.A. about a, a, a month ago, and it, it, it's an extremely moving experience. I think everybody who watches is going to see it in a different way, and really, it, it's very very powerful. Uh, he had a little bit of a connection to be able to get into the movie. His uh, son, Emilio Estevez, was the writer, the director, and the producer, so I think he had a little bit of an in. But uh, it, it's exceptional, uh, and I'd really encourage you to, to uh, see it when it comes out. He's running all over the Midwest coming up this fall, doing uh, screenings, and he's doing actually a premiere in New York City in October uh, in front of President Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I mean, it, it's like I said, it's a very moving uh, experience to be able to see. But he, he does keep busy. Uh, but I, I really would like to just to introduce uh, a friend of Santa Paula, a friend of the Boys and Girls Club, Ramon Estevez Martin Sheen. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's a very familiar theme. Um, thank you so much, uh, Chief McKinnon. Uh, this is a very special guy you've got here. And uh, I would suggest that you keep a close eye on him in the next few months. Scotland Yard is looking for a new leader. Um, I had the honor of participating with uh, Josue and uh, Chief McKenna uh, uh, several uh, weeks ago in Los Angeles to do a national uh, promotional uh, spot uh, for the Girls and Boys Clubs of America. And uh, they asked uh, the Chief and I and Josue to be in a little skit at, at teaching uh, boys and girls about honesty and uh, they had us doing this little card game and I was arrested for cheating by the chief. <laughs> I want to make it clear I'm appealing that <laughs> arrest and, uh, and make it clear that I was trying to teach Josue how to play the game. That was my intention, chief, but he hauls me away in handcuffs. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> Um, so, you know, um, I, I was watching the little video before with the children saying uh, so many of the reasons that they love the Girls and Boys Club and uh, some of the wonderful things they learned. And I just want to share uh, some of my life skills that I learned at the Boys Club because then, as the Chief said, it was the Boys Club, the, there was no Girls Club. And uh, in order of importance, I learned to swim, play basketball, and this above all, I learned to shoot pool, which was a life skill that I can still do. I have trouble swimming and playing basketball, but I can still shoot pool, thanks to the boys club. You know, when I was asked to, uh, or when I agreed to speak here again uh, this morning, uh, I was wondering what I might uh, say in my remarks that uh, would have uh, any meaning to young people today, particularly the young people that are here this morning. Uh, you know, um, uh, despite my hair coloring, which I had done uh, just yesterday again, 
in the Reagan fashion. Uh, I, I just turned 71 years old a few days ago, and uh, no, it's all right. I, 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 <laughs> the old phrase comes to mind, you know, if I knew I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, 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 I have no computer skills, so I have no email. I, I, I can't uh, Twitter or tweet or uh, dawdle, whatever they do uh, with all that messaging with their thumbs. And uh, so I feel kind of out of the loop. And so I just thought that fundamentally, really all I should do is just try to tell you who I am, where I came from, and what I believe. Uh, I, I've been an actor all of my life. In fact, I have no conscious memory of ever not being an actor. I, I couldn't have identified it as such when I was a boy until around the age of five or six I started going to the movies with my brothers and gradually over time it dawned on me that, oh, I'm like one of those people up on the screen. And it was a, an extraordinary revelation and a deeply comforting one because I knew even then that I would never be happy if I did not pursue that wonderful mystery that possessed me and which gave me a possession of myself. And so in a, a very clear way, I, I, I could say that my chosen profession was a foregone conclusion. But while acting is what I do for a living, activism is what I do to stay alive. And over the years, I'm often asked how I came to unite the two, and the answer is I don't have a clue because it was not a conscious decision. It was more of a, a natural progression. Uh, but, you know, if you grew up like I did in a, uh, a, a large, uh, poor immigrant family, uh, you were either uh, Hispanic or Irish Catholic, and I was fortunate enough to be both, so I had a leg up when it came to social justice. <laughs> Both of my parents were immigrants. My father was Francisco Estevez. He was born in northern Spain in Galicia near Vigo on July 2nd, 1898, an auspicious year because just a few weeks earlier the United States declared war on Spain. My mother was Mary Ann Phelan. She was born May 22nd, 1903 in Borisa Kane County, Tipperary, Ireland. And they met in Dayton, Ohio and were married in 1927. They had 12 pregnancies, 10 survived, nine boys and one girl. I'm the seventh son, and as you know, my real name is Ramon. I grew up in Dayton, and I left my hometown to go to New York City to begin my career in the theater in 1959. And the next 10 years were filled with an equal number of miraculous and tragic events that inspired a generation and divided a nation. I met my wife, Janet, in 1960, and we had four children, Emilio, Ramon, Carlos, who is known as Charlie, and my daughter, Renee, who are all in the business. And we moved around as a family due to circumstances uh, beyond our control, having to do with finances and not working that much. Uh, we moved from Manhattan to the Bronx, to Staten Island, to Brooklyn, and then back to Manhattan. John Kennedy was in the White House, and John Twenty-Third was in the Vatican. We held our breath during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we were lifted up by Martin Luther King's dream as civil rights, space travel, and Vietnam came into the national focus. Suddenly, we lost John Kennedy. We still don't know how or why, but the worst of the 60s was yet to come. 1968 began with the Tet Offensive in Vietnam and ended with the return of Richard Nixon. In between, we lost both Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy, just eight weeks apart. Stunned and broken, we backed out of the 60s, still clinging to the absolute certainty that lost causes were the only causes worth fighting for and that nonviolence was the only weapon of any use. Each time someone stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, they send forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and injustice. Those words were spoken at Cape Town University in 1966 by Robert Francis Kennedy. 
They are inscribed on his memorial at Arlington National Cemetery as well, and they have been a powerful source of inspiration for my generation ever since. Whether we choose to acknowledge it or not, we are all responsible for each other and the world, which is exactly the way it is because consciously or unconsciously, we have made it so. And while none of us were responsible for the rules that govern the universe, we are all responsible for the rules that govern our own hearts. And we are all beneficiaries of the many heroic strangers who have gone before us over the centuries and assured us that the world is still a wonderful and safe place despite our fears, and that we are not asked to do great things. We are asked to do all things with great care. And this, above all, one heart with courage is a majority. Over the entire history of the human race, every truth began as a blasphemy. And no one who has ever made a contribution of any real worth has done so without self-sacrifice, personal suffering, and sometimes even death. The Irish tell a story of a man who arrives at the gates of heaven and asks to be let in. St. Peter says, of course, just show us your scars. The man says, I have no scars. St. Peter says, what a pity. Was there nothing worth fighting for? My fondest wish here this morning is that each and every one of you young people will find something in your life worth fighting for. Because when you do, you will have found a way to unite the will of the Spirit to the work of the flesh. And all of humanity will have discovered fire for the second time. And the light from that fire will eliminate your, uh, illuminate your path to that place where the heart is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, my Father. Let us all awake. Amen. And thanks so much.